If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, woods people, hunters, hikers, etc., what's the scariest thing that's happened to you while in total isolation? Deep woods, dark forests, scary cabins in the woods, etc.? I lived in a small town in Bastrop, Louisiana, with my cousin and his wife. There's not much to do in Morehouse Parish besides drive back roads like we've done thousands of times before. Then, one night in 2015, we were leaving a church we used to clean. It was around 2 a.m. or so. We were in my cousin's 1990 GMC Sierra single cab 4x4 when we decided to ride back roads. So we're cruising. Me and him are talking and listening to Nirvana, probably we played music together. But anyway, his wife was asleep in the middle seat when we turned on a paved road 5 miles or so outside of town and came around a curve, and there was something we had never seen before. I'm an avid hunter who has been in the woods all hours of the night and day and was in the army, but I had never been more freaked out by something than what we witnessed. There was something dead in the road, and something was eating it. When the headlights hit it, it looked up and was about two and a half to three feet tall, like it was kneeling over whatever it was eating. It had red eyes, and it stood up so fast that it seemed like a millisecond. It was seven or eight feet tall and pitch black. Its skin looked like bat skin but was way darker. In one fell swoop, it leapt, its wings opened, and it flew into the woods on the side of the road. It had to be moving at 50 miles per hour. And I've always been cynical when it comes to paranormal stuff, but I know what I saw that night, and so does my cousin. Years ago, when I was right around 16, I took one of my younger sisters for a relaxing walk through the woods. We both loved the outdoors, and the trees were gorgeous that mid-autumn afternoon. After about 20 minutes of following a rough, beaten path made by locals, we came to a marshy stream bed. Skunk cabbage, cat of nine tails, dragon snaps, and the like covered everything except for the wood plank path that snaked through to the other side. I walked that path frequently, so I knew the scenery. What we found was definitely not there a few days beforehand. About halfway along the plank path, we found what I can only describe as a totem sticking up from one of the marsh pools. It was a thick branch plunged into the earth, with pine sap and needles stuck to it, and a small rodent skull placed on top. We could still see dried blood and smell the flesh that had to have been attached to it not too long ago. We came from a tribal-esque background, so we had heard stories about totems being very bad omens. So what do I do? The one thing an adolescent male would think to do, I kicked it. The branch snapped, leaving about an inch of wood visible above the muddy water, and the rest went flying off into a nearby dragon snap tangle. I immediately felt cold. Like I was being watched. I whipped around to see what was up and damn near shit myself. The stream bed ran between two hills, like a valley. The plank path ran between the bases of these two hills. At the top of the hill, opposite the way we had come from, stood a deer. Yeah, I know, that doesn't sound very scary, but this wasn't a normal deer. First off, it stood on its hind legs. Second, it was looking right at us. Which means instead of its head being seated normally, it would have been stuck looking vaguely skyward, it was set like a human. That was what struck me first, but the next realization made me very, very scared. Its forelegs were hanging. Wrong. They should have stuck near straight out, but instead they hung lower down at its sides. Again, just like a man's. My sister and I stood looking at this creature for only a moment or two before it moved with lightning speed and broke out into a sickening shamble down the opposite side of the hill, away from us. We hauled asses out of there and never went back. We never told my folks or anyone else, for that matter. I don't know if it was some sort of forest spirit, or Wendigo, or what, but it scared the shit out of me. My friends and I went out one night to the hills in Lakeside, California, a suburb of San Diego, looking for a supposed screaming tree. We were in this field walking around different creepy looking trees, and one buddy took another aside and started whispering. The rest of us were getting creeped out by this, so we asked what the hell they were talking about, and just then one of them yelled out towards a hill about 100 yards away. Excuse me. Should we not be here? Silence. If we aren't supposed to be here, we can leave. The rest of us turned to look, and there's this dark figure traversing the hill, it had to be 12 feet tall, and the steps it was taking were massive. It stops and looks down at us, and just then another friend exclaims, what the duck is that? And he points to a tree about 20 yards away from us, and another similar figure looks like it's hiding behind the tree and staring at us. The figure on the hill started walking towards us, and I don't think any of us had ever run so fast in our lives back to the car and hauled asses out of there. The night was clear, and it was a full moon, so it was weird that they were just dark, with no features whatsoever. The year was 2013, 
and I was finally old enough to go big game hunting in my state of Michigan. My uncle is kind enough to take my dad and me up north to his small cabin. It's early November or December in Michigan at this point in time, so it's absolutely freezing. The day comes for my dad and I to set up in the deep woods at our blind. It is a two-person blind, so we were sitting back to back, scanning in the opposite direction of each other, looking through the tree line. Hours go by and we see no activity from deer, so I get up and walk down a half downhill, following deer poop and prints. I reached an area that was just breathtaking, a hidden stream in the middle of the forest. The sun was cutting through the trees, and it was so warm and relaxing. I sat down and started to daydream when I felt the ground vibrate with four individual footsteps, so I snapped my eyes in the direction it was coming from only to see the back of something huge jumping over the stream into the thick brush on the other side and getting away all within two seconds. It was brown and well over 6'3", which is what I stand at. I do not want to claim I saw a Bigfoot or a wild man, but I honestly do not know what I saw that day. I grew up in northern Michigan, USA, about 30 miles southwest of Traverse City. My grandparents also live about 5 minutes from where I grew up and have a large acreage of woods, about 117. Growing up, and still to this day, they had an old golf cart and created long, sprawling trails in those woods. Somewhere in the middle of the acreage is a field, about 2 acres in area, that has an old sawmill. About 7 years ago, when I was about 13, my sisters, who were 9 and 8, and I decided to go on a golf cart ride through the woods on trails. My 9-year-old sister sat up front with me, while the 8-year-old sat on the back of a mounted seat facing the opposite way. We drove up towards the field, and once we got through the trees into the field, I drove about 100 feet in and saw this figure a ways ahead of me. It was probably 10 feet tall and human-shaped. Its legs kind of dragged as it walked, and it was hunched over, and its arms looked semi-detached and dangled. Its face was kind of a gaping black hole, but I saw what I thought was a dangling eye. My nine-year-old sister saw it too, and it began to kind of run towards us, and I whipped the cart around and sped home. My grandpa went out with a gun into the field and found nothing. I have been able to find nothing on this for years, and my sister and I are still terrified to this day. The only legend I know of from up there is the dog man, and I know it was not that. It was December 2003, and my parents and I were at my grandparents' house. The house is in deep south Louisiana and very out in the middle of nowhere. We were there for Christmas, and the house was full, so I slept in their fifth wheel camper. It was about 2 to 3 a.m., and I heard my grandparents, the Great Danes, barking up a storm. I look out the window, and I see them chasing a small black object about a foot tall. It's darting back and forth, leaving these dogs in the dust. So it darts under the fence and stops right under my grandfather's repair shop light. It goes from being about a foot tall straight up to well over six feet tall. It was thin but not frail, it didn't have facial features that I could see. It was like looking at a shadow. It wrenched its back and screamed at the dogs. I can still remember the sound and the feeling it gave me. The dogs ran to their kennel, they didn't come out for two days, then turned their heads towards me. Even though I couldn't see its eyes, I knew it was looking dead at me. Then it bolted into the woods faster than I had ever seen anything on two feet move, and it disappeared into the woods. I was so scared that I didn't go into the woods for years. I grew up playing in the woods. I camped on a hill overlooking Skinwalker Ranch before. I'm assuming you've heard of it if you're interested in skinwalkers. Nothing really stood out regarding skinwalkers while I was there, but there were a few strange things. First, the town is almost completely deserted, and the few people that were living around there didn't want to talk about Skinwalker Ranch. The ranch itself has a long gravel driveway to a gate that says no trespassing, and upon looking through my binoculars at the house, I saw a man on the porch looking through binoculars at me. He made his way to the gate. He was friendly and said that nothing ever happens there but that we weren't allowed on the property and that we could go to the south side of the property to have a full view of it. So if nothing weird never happens there, why have people who have lived there been desperate to move? Nids took it over, they have cameras surrounding the place, and all night long, about every half hour, two men would search the whole ranch area with flashlights. Weird. Here are the paranormal things that happened, we saw a huge black void in the sky that wasn't there before. It is really strange when you can easily see the stars out there. The cows didn't moo there, they screamed. The desert floor was very hot, too hot to sleep in the tent we set up because it felt like it was burning us. All around, it just felt not right there, I can't explain it. I wish I had more to say, but you should look up stories about that place. We ended up leaving around 3 a.m. because we couldn't handle how uneasy it felt there. We ended up parking in a Native American cemetery and sleeping there. This was in the 60s or 70s. 
My father's aunt and uncle on his mom's side lived in the Kienta, Arizona, area and were driving up to Shiprock for some reason. They had gotten a late start in the day and decided to drive through the night. They were driving a four-door sedan and were in one of the areas where there wasn't much at all, pretty much in the middle of nowhere again. At this time, the road they were on was a dirt road, it was maintained but still kind of rough in some areas. My dad's uncle was driving, and his wife was sleeping in the passenger seat. She woke up, seemingly without reason, just as my dad's uncle noticed movement in the low bush on the side of the road. It was something pacing the car, moving back and forth closer and further away from the road with the terrain. My dad's uncle slowed down, and when he did, the thing slowed down as well. At this point, they were both looking at it. Again, this is the middle of nowhere on a dirt road in the middle of the desert with no street lamps, so the only light was the headlights. As he slowed down, the thing ran ahead, crossed into the road, and stopped directly in front of them. He described a man, mostly naked but covered in feathers, who sort of looked like a bird. The next thing he knew, they were both in the car, but it was moving. The bird man was gone, my dad's uncle was in the back seat of the car, and his wife was in the driver's seat, driving. Neither of them has any recollection of what happened after the thing stopped in front of their car. They drove through to Shiprock without further incident. I took a trip to stay in a cabin in the middle of the woods, high up in the mountains of the city of Ranger, Georgia, USA. This neighborhood was 30 minutes up in the mountains away from civilization, and even the cabins were spread far apart. The front deck of the cabin was completely exposed to the woods, so I acknowledged that any animals could stroll along if they pleased. But I stayed there for about a week, and me and my boyfriend sat outside on the front deck every night, very late, and at no point felt in danger. It was peaceful, with fireflies out and the sounds of crickets every night. Until the fifth night, it was eerily dark too, the moon was covered heavily. It was about midnight, and all of a sudden I didn't feel peace like I did those other nights, the forest went completely quiet, and I felt a horrible sense of dread. I genuinely feared for my life. I sat there in my chair, looking out into the dark forest, trying to rationalize and calm myself down. It was my mind playing tricks, but all of a sudden, my boyfriend said out loud that he felt unsafe. I told him I felt the same, and we ran inside. The cabin has three floors, and we were able to climb out of the window and sit on the roof because we wanted to still be outside and relax. It didn't matter how high I was, I felt something truly evil and stayed inside. The only other time I felt something so evil or like someone was watching was when I had a few paranormal experiences at a haunted house. Georgia doesn't really get mountain lions. Maybe a bear, but it didn't feel that way at all. I was taking my dog out back to do her business as usual around 10 at night, sometime in the fall of 2015 in New Hampshire. I had the overwhelming feeling of being watched and was very paranoid, for no apparent reason. Out of nowhere, an image popped into my head of a goatman type thing standing on the hill by my neighbor's yard, holding a staff, looking in my general direction. I wasn't actually seeing it, it was a mental image that I'm sure I did not come up with. I noticed my dog looked a bit on edge, which wasn't too odd as it was a little windy, but she was more afraid than usual. About two minutes after the vision, I heard my name being called from right at the edge of the woods in the backyard, in a voice that sounded exactly like my girlfriend's. At first, I brushed it off as my mind was playing tricks on me, but then it happened again, and my dog definitely heard and cocked her head up. It happened a third time, and I booked it back for the house. My dad told me I looked as white as a ghost, and I stumbled over my words explaining what happened to him, but he got the gist of it and went outside with me to investigate with a flashlight. We saw nothing but heard my name a few times. My dad decided that it was trees rubbing against each other, sounding vaguely like my name, and so he laughed. And then we heard laughter from the woods again, just like my girlfriend's. We then decided it was not the trees. I video called my girlfriend soon after, and she was home, so it couldn't have been her. To this day, I don't go outside alone after 9 p.m., and it hasn't happened since, but I can't rest until I have some ideas. Our initial thought was Skinwalker, but as I live in New Hampshire, I wonder if it was a Wendigo, Fleshgate, or something else. The vision is also something that I haven't heard of relating to them either. I'm Native American and grew up in the middle of nowhere, with the nearest neighbor being a mile away. My grandmother always told me stories about the little people. I guess they were a mean tribe of short natives. They used to travel and attack other tribes for no reason, they were known to be mean and ruthless. Then one day, the surrounding tribes all teamed up and annihilated the whole tribe of little people. They are said to haunt and bother the tribes, lure children away, and tie them up in the woods. It is also said that if you ever see one, all your hair will turn white and you will die. 
My grandfather and my mom swear they saw Bigfoot one time in a field by our house. They were driving home in a snowstorm when they saw someone walking in a field near their house. My grandpa pulled over and yelled out, asking if they were okay and if they needed a ride. And then they realized that the person was super tall, and it looked at them and ran out further into the storm, where they couldn't see it anymore. The next spring, they found a huge footprint in the pastures. My grandma used to tell me a lot of spooky stories about skinwalkers, the derby hat man, and the goat man. She even worked in this old, haunted boarding school called the Sisters Building. It wasn't a boarding school anymore after she worked there, but she's told me a lot of creepy stories about that place. So me, our baby, and my fiancé just moved into my aunt's house about a month ago due to family issues. Everything has been smooth while staying here so far, except a few things. So this place is an old log cabin from 1903, which I believe is what my aunt says, and it's out in Missouri in the middle of nowhere. Well, at first it was just all the stories my uncle would tell about all the weird shit that happens out here, but then things started happening. One morning my uncle was getting ready for work, and he's a truck driver, so he leaves early Monday morning and doesn't come back until Friday night usually. Well, he calls my aunt and tells her that when he was leaving for work, he saw a wolf the size of his pickup truck. Wolf isn't too much of a problem, right? Well, it is to us because it's been lurking around our house lately and will not stop. It only shows itself early in the morning and howls so loudly at night that it wakes us up. We also have dogs here, and the dogs aren't dead. If this wolf is so big and everything, why hasn't it killed the dogs? It only wants to get really close to the house and howl very loudly. The dogs don't bark or act like they're even bothered. I keep thinking about skinlookers, they have been crossing my mind for a month or so. I started reading about them, but then the thought of them wouldn't leave. I'm 50% Native American too. Does that have anything to do with all these things? Also, I hear knocking on the doors from time to time at night and very weird sounds outside, sometimes almost like singing or just sounds with a little rhythm. When I was young, from birth until about age 11 or 12, I lived in a rural part of northern New Jersey, and our house was in the middle of the woods. So basically, there wasn't anyone around but my parents, my brother, and myself. Both my parents worked during the day, and in the summer months, my brother and I would stay home alone until my mother came home in the early afternoon. I used to play a lot around the outside of the house, in the garden, in the woods, and so on. At the time, I had a few experiences that now make me shudder to think about. Several times I'd be out playing, and I would feel small objects hitting me on the back and my legs. Sometimes I'd see little pebbles on the ground, or they would be caught up in my shirt or jacket. It would weird me out a bit, so I'd just go inside. I wouldn't say it happened regularly, but it happened on more than one occasion. The other strange experience was that I was outside, just playing around with sticks and hitting them on rocks and things. After a while, I noticed that I could hear similar sounds coming from a ways off into the trees. I'd drum out a pattern, listen quietly, and hear a reply. I must have done this for several minutes before getting creeped out and going inside. The older I got, the more uneasy I felt about the experiences, and so I stopped going out alone. Eventually we moved to a house in the center of town, and that was the end of it. Recently, since watching shows like Finding Bigfoot, I've learned that supposedly Sasquatch throw things and hit sticks on trees, but I can't say I ever saw anything. This happened a few years ago when my family was traveling out west. We were traveling through Saskatchewan late at night, and I was in the front seat with my dad, talking to him to help him stay aware. We were on a two-lane highway in the middle of nowhere, and it was one of those places out in the prairies with literally no trees and barely any buildings for kilometers. I don't remember the last town we had gone through, but it was a good 30 kilometers back, and I remember the next town we went through was a good distance after this encounter. After driving for a while, we saw this guy on the side of the road, just staring at our car as we drove by. He wasn't hitchhiking or anything, and he didn't have a car, bike, or anything with him, he just stood in the grass right by the road, staring at us and watching us go by. And this was in the middle of nowhere, no trees, not even a farmhouse nearby. Just one guy in a white shirt and jeans in the middle of nowhere. Needless to say, my dad stepped on the gas after that. It was definitely one of the strangest things I have seen, and I wonder what could have driven someone to just be out on a road at night in the middle of nowhere like that. I'm a proud Aboriginal of the Wiradjuri tribe from Australia, and a few years ago, I was out riding my motorcycle around the farm that me and my family lived on. On this farm, there were two hills, and on the bottom of one of these hills, there was something like a small valley that came back up steeply. The bottom of the valley was riddled with rocks roughly the size of a human skull, so it was practically useless for farming. 
At the top of the valley are these rock formations that collect water, so it's a great place to come just after it rains. Usually there are a few dozen roos out, and that's why I came up there. To chase the roos back up the hill before they get onto the crops, it's a pain in the arse to do it this way instead of scaring them away with my rifle, but I don't like to carry my gun on my motorcycle, and that's the only way I had to get up there. On a sunny Saturday morning, I did what I usually do. Eat, fuel up, check everything, and make sure I pack plenty of water, as it can sometimes take me anywhere from 2 to 6 hours to do this job, and strap on my knife that I take everywhere. I set off on my trusty motorcycle, and it takes me a good 30 minutes to get where I need to go. As I arrive, I stop the bike and look around. Now this is where I started to have a feeling. A feeling that I had never experienced before. It made me uneasy. I looked around and listened. There were very few roos around, which is highly unusual. Something had already scared them off. Then I listened. Nothing, no sound of wind, not sounds of birds in the distance, not even the sound of twigs breaking under the feet of the kangaroos I was starring at. It was as if the whole world had gone completely silent. I ran to my motorcycle and kicked it to get the duck out of there. I spun around, and that was when I saw it. A black dog is slowly walking away from me, about 20 meters on my left. I let out a sigh of relief. I had never seen this dog before, so I pulled the bike over and picked up a rock. I threw it at the dog and yelled at it to get the rock missed but landed fairly close to it. It stopped. Just stopped. That feeling of uneasiness came straight back. It turns its head to face me, then its whole body. This was when I realized that it was no dog. It was about the size of a dog, but with a fox's head and longish hair like a fox. And the eyes. Blood red. Glowing. I couldn't look away, it was like it was staring into my soul. I unclipped my knife and held it with my right hand, ready for this thing to lunge at me. It growled as if in response to my knife. It was horrifying. Its lips hadn't moved, and it felt like it had risen up inside of me. In my head. It bared its teeth. Then I noticed something that made me drop the knife and run. With each slow step it took, it grew. It grew to the point that the top of its head was on my shoulder. I took off, heading straight through the paddocks, glancing over my shoulder every few seconds to see this thing chasing after me. I finally got back to the main road that leads from the hills to the farmhouse. I looked behind me, and the thing had stopped, pacing back and forth in the shadows of the trees that lined the road. I stopped and looked at it, wondering why it had stopped. Then another growl came, again from within me, only louder. I took this as a warning to leave, so I did. When I got back, I immediately told my family, who simply laughed it off. My grandmother came over to me and pulled me aside. She believed me. She told me that, as a little girl, she too had seen one and that it was an evil spirit, meaning death and chaos. To this day, I have never been up there alone or without my rifle. This happened a few years ago in a campground in Florida. I visit this campground every two years, and I am very familiar with it at this point. This is the first time anything like this has happened. This campground is also in a national park, so there is a thick forest surrounding it. My cousin and I left a cabin and went on a walk down the road and through the woods at sunset. About a mile or so in, we go off the road into an area that I am familiar with. It has a roundabout type road with trimmed weeds in the middle. The roundabout has two roads to it, the one we entered from and another that leads to an area I'm not very familiar with. To the left of the roundabout was a large cabin that my family frequently rented out for events. To the right was a picnic area gazebo that overlooked a pond. We were completely surrounded by dense woods. My cousin and I go to the gazebo to talk and watch the gorgeous sunset over the pond. We found the fuse box for the gazebo and turned it on for a little extra light while we talked. After a while, darkness started to catch up with us, and we realized the area looked like a perfect spot for a horror film to take place, so we decided to turn off the lights and head back to the cabin. Being in the middle of a national park, there were no light poles or street lights. It was pitch black, save for our phone flashlights. Once we turned off the gazebo, we noticed something that shouldn't be there. In the middle of the roundabout area was a green light or orb suspended about 5 feet in the air. It was about the size of a grapefruit, and it didn't move. There was nothing in the roundabout that would produce light, and the light didn't illuminate anything or look like it was attached to anything. My cousin and I are a little freaked out by this and make our way towards the road, avoiding the orb as much as we can. A short way down the road, we realized we had no idea where we were and that we had gone down the wrong road. We returned to the roundabout area, and the orb is still there. Unfortunately, the road we needed to get to was on the other side, meaning we would have to pass the light about 6 feet away to get there. We tried our best to walk by, but with a closer look, I still couldn't see the source of it. 
we eventually returned to the cabin, and all was well. That was my first and only time being in that area at night. I didn't take photos because I was pretty scared of being in pitch black woods in the middle of the night and was using my phone's flashlight to make sure I didn't accidentally step on a snake. I asked my friend about it, and he said it was probably an animal spirit, but it was very, motionless. It was just suspended in the air, glowing bright green. One night, me and my brother were hanging out with a few of his friends. We were hanging out and then decided we wanted to meet up with another friend who was down the road. We knew it was already dark, but we figured that he was close enough to just walk. We used our phones as flashlights and talked about stupid stuff as we walked. Of course, the street we live on wasn't in the middle of nowhere, but it had a lot of trees and woods around. Oddly, we started to hear a lot of strange noises, like someone running in the woods and stuff, but we just figured it was an animal. We were about 40 feet away from our friend's house when my brother stopped dead in his tracks. He froze and told us he saw someone, so we all looked in the direction he was looking. There was a very tall man in the woods, just standing there. He tilted his head a bit, I guess checking us out, and then his body floated a few feet in the air and disappeared. Being terrified, we started running to our friend's house, almost breaking down the door and getting inside. To this day, we have no clue what we saw that night. So back in 2016, my friends and I, all in high school at the time, were going out to our friend's family-owned cabin to do a film shoot. The director and writer of the film had been working on it since the summer, and we really wanted to do everything in our power to make this the best film we could make since our friend had been working on this project the whole school year. So the day is winding down, and we just wrapped up the campfire. It was picture perfect. I mean, right when the actors kissed, the logs fell, sending up a plume of sparks, illuminating them just right to show a silhouette of the kiss. So we are packing up the gear to move to the next scene, which was a fight scene in the woods, and as we are getting ready to move out, I swear I can hear a voice say to me, run, get out of there, he's coming. I assume the voice is talking about my father, and then my memory goes blank from there. I don't know what happened, but I come to sit on the porch, and my friends ask me if I'm okay. I say yes and ask them what happened, and they tell me I almost walked into the woods. I ask how and why, and they say they don't know, and I just start walking like I was in a trance. I never told them about the voice and how I felt like I needed to leave for fear of my father finding me, but after that, we decided to call it early and go to bed. Fast forward to 2022, and I can still hear and now feel that voice calling out to me, calling me back to those woods. I don't know if I should go back or what to do. Me and my boyfriend absolutely adore hiking, and there are so many places to go because of where we live in Oregon. Anyway, we decided to go hiking after 11 p.m. at night on one of the most used trails in our area. We had both been there multiple times throughout our lives, and neither of us was concerned about something happening. There was only one thing we were kind of nervous about, and that was the wildfire that had just happened. We parked on the side of the road and walked to the start of the trail. Even though there was a fire, the path was actually very clean and stable. We started walking up the trail when we just started talking about paranormal things, witchcraft, and Wendigos. Terrible move on our side talking about things of that sort. Now it is to be noted that we both had flashlights, very good ones, and we were both very observant as to where we were on the path. As we got deeper into the conversation, we both realized in just a second that we were not on a trail anymore or anywhere near one. I mean, it was like a blink of an eye. All of a sudden, I remember walking on the trail, and then we just weren't. I freaked out and told him we needed to start backtracking, but thankfully he said no because we couldn't see any trail around us or anything we recognized. I truly believe if we tried backtracking, I would not be here saying this. He told me we needed to start walking up the hill in hopes of either standing on a ledge to see where we were or to find another path. We walked for a while up the hill when, thankfully, we popped out on a fire road. We walked all the way down, terrified, and came out on the road about a mile from where our car was. It was the first Tuesday of the Pennsylvania deer, rifle, season. December 3, 2013. I've always been an avid hunter, and I would wake up very early in the morning to get into the woods before daylight. I would be in the woods at 4.30 in the morning. Having to hunt on state game lands meant beating other people into the woods to get a decent spot. When I got to the parking area around 4 a.m., no one else was there. So I walked into the woods, not using a flashlight, only walking by moonlight. I walked through a field into the tree line and started on the path to my spot. I came to the intersection in the path, one way went left and down the mountain, the other way went right. I went right because my spot was on the other side. Roughly 50 yards after making the right-hand turn, I smelled what I could only describe as hot garbage. It hit me in the face. I mean, hot dumpster juice in the middle of August. 
So I stopped dead and turned on my flashlight, expecting to see piles of garbage. Nothing. No garbage, nothing dead. Just a hot garbage smell. Keep in mind that this is in December, it's cold out. High 20s to low 30s so even if there was garbage, it shouldn't smell that bad. So I kind of thought nothing of it. I followed the path to my spot, which was down over the ridge from the garbage smell. Roughly 40 feet down, that leads into a grass field where I would sit. I set up my seat and got settled in for about 2 minutes. That's when the rocks started coming down the ridge. The first rock startled me, causing me to turn on my light again, scanning the field, hoping to see the eye reflection of a deer, but nothing was there. I sat back down. Another rock comes down the ridge. This time I stand up and go out into the grass field with a flashlight and the pistol that I carry while hunting. Scanned again, nothing, purposely waited in the field for about 5 minutes. Now I'm getting angry, assuming another hunter is messing with me because I'm in their spot. I sit down again. The third rock, sounding larger than the others, comes tumbling down the ridge. I don't get up this time. Not 2 minutes after that, another rock not only tumbled but sounded as though it was thrown off the ridge and landed in the field. Now duck it, I'm pissed. I gathered up my gear and started back up the trail to the ridge. I get on top of the ridge, scanning with my light the whole time, no eyes, no other hunter. I get to the spot where I smelled the hot garbage. Nothing. The smell is gone. Finally, it clicked in my head. It may not have even been another person. Possibly something else. I've heard other stories of people's Bigfoot experiences, a lot of which remark about how bad they smell. Duck this. I all but ran out of the woods. And to top it all off, no other vehicles were in the parking area when I got out of the woods. This took place in Pennsylvania State Game Lands 229, outside of Tremont in Schuylkill County. I later came to find out that a co-worker of mine had actually seen a bipedal cross in front of his car within two miles of my location. So maybe they're real. I don't know but I definitely had an experience that I won't forget. I live in Oregon, and I have had experiences with the creature they call Bigfoot. I have seen three of them in my life now and find them fascinating. Now, I go to the woods to search for them, and have fun, because the forests of Oregon are insanely beautiful. However, I have always thought of Bigfoot as a physical being and not paranormal. Last weekend, myself and two others were out in the woods. We had been scanning most of the evening with night vision and thermal imagers. We were standing on a logging road in the middle of nowhere. It was about midnight. While the others I was with were using the tech devices, I saw, with my naked eyes, lights in the forest. At first, I thought they were people camping and moving about with flashlights. I pointed these lights out to my companions, who could not see them with technology. They were not giving off heat or infrared lights. If they were people with lights, we would have seen their bodies giving off heat clearly from that distance, about 75 yards. During this time of head scratching, one of the lights broke from the tree line and came a little closer. When it stopped its horizontal movement and went upwards in a serpentine manner, I realized we were not dealing with humans at all. My hair stood up. This orb went up, grew bright enough to illuminate the surrounding trees a little, then just blinked out and was gone. Others remained in the woods, dancing around. Some were white, and some were tinged with blue. Some were pinkish. All are mostly white, though. We estimated the size of them between tennis balls to be about two feet across. They were silent. Creepily silent. We watched these lights, or orbs, for close to a half hour before we decided to get out of there. What did we experience? There are rare fireflies in Oregon, according to scientists. I have spoken with a lot of woodsmen here in the area who have never seen fireflies in the Oregon Cascades. Myself included. Though I have seen them in other states, these did not seem like fireflies at all. They were way too big and not flashing. I was out coyote hunting on December 29, 2019 in northern Utah, around the Golden Spike area. I've been to this property multiple times. It's about 20 miles away from any town and 5 miles away from the nearest house or building, which sits in its own little valley. I arrived an hour before sunrise to get set up. It was a pretty normal trip. I had called a few within 100 yards when they decided to leave. It was almost noon, so I decided to pack up and head home. I was parked about a mile away, so I had a little walk. As soon as I turned my back to the mountain, I started hearing this sound. I kept hiking, dismissing it at first, but it seemed to follow me after about a half mile. It was still just as loud as when it started. I thought maybe someone lost their dog or an animal was hurt, but when I investigated, I couldn't find anything, and the sound stopped. I started heading towards my truck again, and it started up again, which is when I tried recording it. I had an uneasy feeling the whole time 
which is strange because this is a very relaxing and peaceful activity for me. It didn't seem to have a pattern, it was random for about an hour, and when I crossed the hill into the next area, I didn't hear it again or since then. Every logical explanation I've thought of seems impossible considering the location, it almost sounds like a flute or howl of some kind, but not anything I've heard before. I live in a semi-rural area of upstate New York, about an hour north of Pennsylvania and three hours west of Syracuse, outside of the town of Corning. I live in a fairly wooded area with a few houses around. We recently had a stretch of trees cut for the power lines next to our house, which is where the sound came from. This is maybe 50 feet from the house. I was going to bed, watching some videos, when I heard a strange noise. At first, I thought it was my phone or the video, but when I paused it, the noise continued. It was coming from outside, which was intriguing to me, so I went to my window to try and see what it was. I couldn't see anything, and I figured it was one of my dogs that was left outside. I went downstairs to check it out, but I saw both of my dogs in their room. This left me puzzled, as the noise continued outside, but it seemed to get louder, as if it were moving to the house. Being downstairs woke up my dogs, and they heard the noise too, as they started barking at it. Normally they don't bark at noises outside, so this is why I started to be on edge. I got some shoes on and was ready to go out when I figured I'd go to the back room to see if I could see it outside, whatever it was, in the dark room without the lights distracting my view. The noise continued, but in spurts, it would start up, then stop for a bit, then repeat, and it happened for about 30 minutes or so. The whole time it went on, the sound moved away from me, into the woods, deeper and deeper, until it finally stopped and hasn't started up since. Normally, I wouldn't care so much about this, but the thing is, it sounded like something screaming, whining, or barking for help, a high-pitched squealing, like something was dying or had been attacked and was being dragged away. On top of that, the sound started from right outside our house, in our front yard, moved all the way around the house, to the backyard, into the woods, and off to God knows where. I don't really know what it was or what it could be, but I'm thinking of trying to go and find out what it is. When I was younger, I lived with my dad for a little while. He worked the night shift and would always leave for work around 9 p.m. and get home around 6 a.m. He would leave me in charge of my younger brother, I always made sure he brushed his teeth, went to bed, and all that jazz. Well, I was probably about 14 at this time, so my brother would have been 7. Our dad had gone to work as usual, and I had put my brother to bed in his room upstairs. Being the rebellious teenager that I was, I always stayed up late on the computer, downstairs in the living room, until the wee hours of the morning, downloading music and instant messaging my friends with our good old dial-up. It was about midnight when I heard these heavy footsteps thump down our stairs. I then hear the light switch in the foyer click on, it has the old push-button switches that are kind of loud down in the foyer and in the upstairs hallway landing, one on top for on and one below for off, the rest in the house were converted to the flick up and down kind that are used in houses now, and the foyer light comes on. The doorway to the foyer is behind me and to the right, so I see it. Thinking logically that it was just my brother needing to pee or get a drink of water, I call out, Draconis' brother, it's late. Do you need something? I heard no reply. I wait a minute and go back to my AOL chat or whatever. When I don't see him come into the doorway or hear him, then I call out, it's pretty late, buddy. You should get back in bed. The foyer light flickers off, but I don't hear the button click, and heavy footsteps trudge back up the stairs, but I don't hear his door open or close. It is a very old house with heavy wooden doors and squeaky hinges. It is then that I realize that I never heard his door open in the first place. I creep quickly but quietly upstairs, as quietly as you can creep on an old wooden staircase, and get to the top of the landing to see that both upstairs doors, our rooms, were closed. I gently ease open his door a sliver and peek in, he is sound asleep in his bed across the room. The creak of the hinges causes him to stir a bit, and I ask him if he's okay and if he came downstairs at all. He mumbles something, half asleep, and rolls back over. I head back downstairs and ponder for a bit, the door didn't open, the footsteps were too heavy to really be a scrawny seven-year-old, and he was still in bed. I freak out because whatever made those footsteps go upstairs, and my brother is now upstairs alone. I spent the night with a pillow on the small upstairs landing between our doors, making sure he was okay all night. It wasn't the first time we had heard disembodied footsteps in that house, but they were usually in the kitchen or going down the basement steps. This was the first time it had been upstairs, and it also audibly clicked the foyer light buttons. I was very uneasy until my dad came home in the morning. This happened two years ago while my brother and I were visiting our grandparents in the Adirondacks. My grandparents' house overlooks a part of the Oswagachi River. 
my brother and I were having a small fire down by the water with our uncle and one of our cousins. It was around 11.30 p.m. when we all heard a deep guttural yell come from the woods on the opposite side of the river. It freaked us out because none of us had heard something like that before. After about a minute or two, we heard a loud crashing noise come from the same direction the yell came from. My cousin booked it up the hill to my grandparents' house, he was only nine, so I don't blame him for doing so. My brother, uncle, and I stayed down by the water to see if we could figure out what was making that noise. The only other noises filling the night were the sounds of frogs and crickets. Eventually, we put out our fire and went to bed because nothing else happened. The following morning, my brother and I set out into the woods to see if whatever was making those noises left any clues. We looked around for a good three hours, but we didn't find anything. Nothing else out of the ordinary happened during our visit. Last summer, I went back by myself for a week-long visit. Every time I went down to the river to fish or to just relax in the sun, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched by someone or something. I haven't been back since due to my hectic work schedule, but when I find the time for another visit, I'm going to explore those woods more thoroughly. I hike a lot, and this past winter, I saw footprints I couldn't explain. I live in Arizona, not far from the Navajo Reservation. I am Navajo. In the middle of nowhere, there are the ruins of an abandoned house. There is no roof, just adobe walls, a dried up old well, and a dilapidated travel trailer. Somebody broke into the travel trailer long ago, and pack rats built nests inside the trailer. I've never been inside the trailer because I avoid mouse droppings due to hantavirus fears. I use the abandoned house and travel trailer as landmarks on my hikes. So this past winter, I went on a hike. At the abandoned homestead, I saw the footprints of a small child, no adults, nothing else. The footprints were 5 inches long and 3 inches wide, and they looked like the soles of sneakers or something a child would wear. I also saw evidence that the child dug around inside the travel trailer, taking things from within. There was a hodgepodge of household items lined up neatly in a row, a steel skillet, hammer, roofing nails, old Coleman fuel containers, old-fashioned glass bottles, etc. Wondering if I was seeing the tracks of a runaway or lost child, I decided to track the footprints. The tracks led away from the homestead, across the plains, and up the side of a mesa. Three miles away, the tracks intersected a dirt road. On the dirt road, I found tire tracks from a car. The car was parked parallel to the dirt road. The child's footprints walked to the driver's side of the car and got in. The car then made a three-point turn and headed back in the opposite direction. Confused about the tracks, I visited my elder. I relayed my story, and my elder offered an explanation. He told me I had tracked a skinwalker. He also told me they have the ability to make their bodies and footprints small. He told me a story about how magic works. He said the skinwalker was probably looking for something inside the ruins. I saw something pretty weird in the woods one day. I was riding my mountain bike alone on some trails at a local park by a river. There was one main paved trail along the river where most people would stay, and then tons and tons of smaller trails of varying difficulty that would branch off from it into the woods. I was out on what I guess were intermediate trails and hadn't run into another person in about an hour or more. I don't think I saw anyone at all off the main trail except a couple deer, squirrels, and rabbits. To be quite honest, I had no idea where I was at the time and was waiting for the trail I was on to meet up with one I somewhat recognized. So anyway, I came up with a split in the trail. To the left was a big hill that I was way too winded up to ride up at the moment, and to the right, the trail crossed over a tiny stream, no bridge, just good old mud, and snaked off. I decided to take a breather, check my phone, drink some water, etc. I got off my bike and started to walk towards the hill to get a better idea of where I was. From the bottom of the hill, Something caught my eye, and I saw a black form that, in retrospect, looked approximately 6 feet tall and 2 feet wide, darting across the top of the hill from right to left. I admittedly didn't get a really good look at it. My first thought was bear. But then I realized that, within the realm of possibility, it's highly unlikely for a bear to be in this area, much less running around on two legs like he's after a pick-a-nick basket. I figured it must be someone else running or on a bike, and I walked up the rest of the hill to see where they went and take a look around. The paranormal was the farthest thing from my mind at this point, especially with it being broad daylight. It didn't take me long to get to the top, and I could see pretty far from that vantage point, but I saw nothing. There was no sound, no movement, and no people anywhere that I could see. I'm pretty damn confident that I would have seen anyone or anything that had crossed my path in the time it took me to get up that hill, even if it was instead shaped like a deer running at full speed. Now, the weirder thing is that when I stood there looking around and thought about exactly what it was that I saw, the only thing that came to mind was a completely black, 
featureless rectangle. I also realized that there was no noise at all when I saw it, from running, bike tires, etc. I started to get a really uneasy feeling like I was unwelcome there and needed to leave quickly before something bad happened. So I went back to my bike and crossed the stream, and the feeling soon went away, so I have no idea what it was. But I was reading somewhere about screen memories, basically where you see something that might be outside your concept of reality or traumatic, and your brain sort of makes up something else. Abductees have talked about seeing owls. I didn't see an owl, and I'm definitely not saying there were aliens involved, but it left a lasting impression on me. I really don't know what to think about it. I live in West Northwestern Georgia, US. I'm in the middle of nowhere, on a weird off on its own cul-de-sac with houses on only one side and woods all around it. Other than the cul-de-sac, houses are all over 100 yards, m, away from each other. The woods are thick and begin about 30 feet, 10 meters, away from our house. The area is not known to have any bears, those are far further north, no wolves, or coyotes, and our coyotes are rather small and very shy. As are the deer. I even contacted our local DFW, and they said there was nothing bigger than coyote and deer out here. I take the dogs out into the yard to pee two to three times after dark. I put them on a split leash and normally wander around the yard for a bit to let them find a spot, but that has come to an end. I don't dare step off the patio now. For the past few weeks, my dogs have been acting really odd when it comes to going out at night. They want to go out front, but since my landlord doesn't want me to let them ruin the front lawn, I have to drag them to the back door. And they refuse to step out most times, especially my younger dog. They want to stay close to the house and are always very alert. They will lunge towards the woods at random, starting to bark like crazy. I would normally call this off as wildlife, but it's been getting really weird. And normally, if there is something like a rabbit, they are very easily shushed and redirected. I've heard whatever it is walking right at the edge of the woods. It doesn't have the typical four-beat walk of a four-legged animal, and it is not scared of my dogs. I can hear it's heavy by the way the leaves scrunch and the branches crack. It is not scared of the dogs or me shouting, and it does not leave. If it's there at 9 p.m., it'll be there at midnight, and it'll be there at 2 a.m. always at the edge of the woods. And I can feel a difference myself, too. Even when I go out alone, I had to grab a patio chair the other day, for example, it's almost like I can feel when it's there. I'm normally very relaxed in my yard, even at night. But I'll get that back shuddering, heartbreaking getting feeling. My dogs will even go crazy when inside, seemingly at random. Standing at the windows, barking out to the woods. I've been out there during the day, looking for things like fur scraps, scats, stags, claw marks, etc. Nothing turned up. Not even footsteps, though I thought it would have been a person, perhaps. I'm trying really hard to find a reasonable excuse for what might have been happening. But I keep running into dead ends. I'm an immigrant, and I'm not too knowledgeable about the local stuff, folklore, or whatever you want to call it. But holy hell, this scares the life out of me. This story took place at the beginning of last summer. I had just gotten off work, and I was very anxious, so I decided to cool off by going on a dirt bike ride without telling anybody and wearing the improper gear, very dumb, I know. I got on my little brother's dirt bike and went tearing down the road towards the creek that's surrounded by woods. I was going as fast as that little bike could go without being aware of my surroundings. When I went around this one corner, I saw it standing in the middle of the road, staring at me. At first, I thought it was some kind of dog. I used to have great Pyrenees growing up, and they kind of looked like that but were dark brown. When I got close enough to it, I saw its face, it was definitely not a dog. When I realized it was possibly some bear, I freaked out, slammed on my front brake, and went flying over the handlebars. Luckily for me, I had a helmet and went in the fetal position, so I landed on my elbows and knees and rolled a couple times. When did I start to crash into the creature or bear? Ran into the woods. I got up, miraculously didn't break anything, and turned off my bike and started screaming bloody murder, probably scaring the thing off to who knows where. Luckily, a passerby picked me up, and I was able to go to the hospital. Luckily, I didn't need a skin graft, and now I just have gnarly scars. Anyway, this is the best way I can describe the thing. Its face kind of looked like a bear, as if it were a bear. It was definitely grisly because it was not scared off easily, and it had a big mane. It was tall, but not as big as an adult grizzly. I could see its shoulder blades, and, I'd, it looked so messed up. Like if it were a grizzly, it was definitely starving or possibly had mange. The only reason why I don't think it was a bear was how messed up it looked and how I couldn't immediately tell that it was a bear. 
Also recently, my dad talked to someone who lives up in those woods, and they said they had recently seen something that was definitely not normal and described it as a possible skinwalker. I live in North Carolina, about an hour away from the Devil's Tramping Ground. It's close to Ashboro. I've always wanted to camp there since I read about it, and I finally got there last night. It's a small circular clearing with the remains of many fire pits from the past. When we got there, it was close to sundown. There was a smaller tree laid over the middle, with some trash and broken bottles here and there from uncaring campers. A couple trees had graffiti, nothing spooky, just dates from people who had been there. We managed to make a small fire before the sun completely went down. I didn't feel weird or anything, it pretty much felt like a normal camping spot. We roasted marshmallows and hot dogs but couldn't find much wood to keep the fire going. I guess previous campers took most of the sticks and wood lying around. The fire went out around 11, and we told some ghost stories and whatnot. There was an excessive amount of sheet lighting. I think it's called the flashes of lightning instead of bolts, that's not too uncommon, though, but it lasted all night. I heard an excess of coyotes howling and dogs barking in the distance. There were no other weird noises. Around 2.40 to 2.50 am, my friend woke me up, coming back into the tent. As soon as they entered and the tent was zipped up, you could see the fire blazing outside. Somehow it had caught fire, even though there were only put-out embers. At first, I was convinced they were messing with me, but we had agreed to make no jokes about each other, and we were both creeped out. I opened the tent hesitantly, but all I saw was the fire. There is nothing out there. After shutting down the tent, the fire stopped as quickly as it started, and nothing else happened. So that's my experience at the place, though I'm not a campfire expert, and I'm sure it probably has a logical explanation. I plan on going back sometime for more than one night. When I was about 10 years old, I lived in a really small town. My friends and I would often play on the trails near the forest after school or on the weekends. Building forts, fishing, etc. One day we were walking a trail, and a lady in her mid-50s or 60s came out of the woods. She had dirt all over her hands and pants. She said her car broke down and she needed help. We said we would go tell our parents to come help, but she insisted we come into the woods. We said no and kept walking. And she just stated it to us. It was like she just shut off as a person when we told her, the smile went away. Even when we were a couple kilometers down the road, we could see her staring at us. Anyway, we get back to my friends, and we are playing tag or something in his backyard. And one of us starts making fun of the lady we saw earlier, and out of nowhere he is launched into his parents' shed. Breaks the window on him and his arm. We all stand in shock. His parents come out and start yelling at us, blaming us and saying we threw him. All of us ended up being grounded. To this day, we all seem to have the same reoccurring dream of seeing the woman in the woods, except every time I dream it, she is closer and closer to us. Anyone have some experience similar to this? Or advice for the dreams? This happened a few years ago. I was a teen. I grew up on our family ranch in the middle of nowhere in the southwestern US. It was a very high elevation area where the Rocky Mountains stand proud, towering over beautiful green plains. Our ranch is about 20 minutes away from a tiny 100-person town, just to give you an idea of how isolated the area was or is. Some family friends were getting married on one icy evening. My family was going to go to the wedding, which was in another town about 45 minutes away. I didn't want to go because my favorite NFL team was playing that night, Go Pats! So they went to the wedding and left me at home. I was sitting at home watching the game with my dog. I remembered that I had forgotten to close the horse barn door. So I put on my jacket and grabbed my rifle in case I ran into a bear, cougar, or something. I went to the barn and closed the door. As I was walking back to the house, I heard the sound of a truck engine traveling through the mountains. I thought, they can't be back so early. The dirt road to get to the ranch winds around a hill just before it gets to the house and barns, so you can't see who's coming until they're upon you. I went home and grabbed as many weapons as I could and made sure all the doors and windows were locked. I turned off the lights so that they wouldn't know that someone was home. I looked out the window that was looking towards the dirt road. A few moments later, I saw headlights coming up the road. I got away from the window so that they wouldn't see me. I saw the headlights shining through one of the house's windows. I prepared for the worst and waited. After a while, I saw the headlights disappear, and I heard the truck engine turn off. I heard footsteps walking around the house a few times, stopping near windows and doors. He even tried to open a door. After a while, the creeps went back to their truck and left. A police report was filed, but they were unable to find out who it was. This takes place in southwest Ohio. Myself and two friends had decided to go on a bit of a hike. 
This was a normal event for us, we frequently made trips out into the woods near our houses. We had even made a makeshift camp near a small pond and camped out there. Long story short, we had a decent amount of experience finding our way through the forest. Anyway, on this hike, we decided to go into some forest that is by a river. During our little expedition, Bill stumbled upon what seemed to be the foundation for a house or barn in a large clearing and quickly called Ted and me over. Further investigation led us to notice that some of the bricks were charred, leading us to believe that at least part of whatever had been there had burned down. The foundation was also very close to the river. We found it odd but didn't really think twice about it. We continued on, and very quickly, less than a five-minute walk, we discovered a shack that was built on stilts, presumably to avoid flood damage. As we looked into it, it was basically half-finished. There was no insulation, and most of it was built out of plywood. The only thing inside was a mattress that looked abandoned. Another thing we found odd, but not entirely out of the ordinary, was that we wanted to explore more, so we made sure to leave some path markers. We then walked about another half hour, found a house and road, and went back home. This is where the experience occurs. We went back a few days later, following our markers to the first clearing with the foundation. When we got to it, it wasn't there. There was no sign of any building or foundation having been in the clearing. It had simply disappeared. We were more than a little spooked, as we had all clearly seen it, and we were sure we were in the same area. We quickly ran to where the shack was, and it was still there, however, the mattress was gone. The missing mattress may not have been paranormal, but I have no explanation for the foundations that all three of us have seen disappear. So when I was like 7 or 8, we used to live in Webster, Wisconsin, and we lived in a house a little bit wider and longer than a trailer house, no upstairs, just the base floor and a basement. It was a beautiful house with a big area that was just wood. One day my cousin was supposed to be watching my two sisters and me, and he said we could all go play outside as long as we stayed in his sight, but within five minutes he ran into the woods and told us to keep up. Of course, we listened to him. We ran after him, and he disappeared. We couldn't see the house or even the tree line where the wood stopped. We were lost, and we started freaking out and crying, and then about half an hour later, a really tall Native American chief came up behind us and asked us what was wrong. Why were we crying? Are we okay? Are we lost? I told him how we were chasing my cousin, and we lost him. We don't know how to get back home, and he smiled and said, don't worry, sweetheart, I'll make sure you get home safe and sound. Just come to my village and rest for a little bit, eat some lunch, and play with the children. And when you're ready, you can explain to me where you live. I said okay, so we go back to his village, and it's a smaller one in the middle of the woods in a clearing, but it had at least 60 people and we ate a stew or something that they made, and he had me draw in the dirt on the road in our house, and he smiled and said, I know exactly where you live. If you want to play for a little bit, that's okay, but I want to get you home before dark. There's a lot of danger in these woods, like bears, coyotes, and bobcats, which are not good for children to be out in, so he took us home, and he didn't leave the edge of the woods. My mom came out crying, asking where we were. She was about to call the cops, we were missing for about four or five hours. She asked us why we left the house without Scotty, my cousin, and I said, he was with us, he ran into the woods and left us behind. We tried to call for him, but he was gone. Then he came outside and said he had never left the house, he thought we were in our rooms, so I told my mom what happened, and she said we'd figure it out tomorrow. The next day, we went and followed our footprints and found the village, or what used to be a village. There was almost nothing there, what had been a gorgeous place was now ash. It had all been burned down. The grass, which was shorter the day before, now stood taller than me, and it looked like it had been burned down and left vacant for hundreds of years. We called out for them but received no response. We found the chief's headdress, a doll made of deer hide, and some other kind of cloth. As we're about to head back, I find a huge eagle feather the size of my arm. That was the most amazing paranormal experience I've ever had. So this was around the time I graduated, or sometime shortly after, in 95. My family lived in Michigan at the time, fairly close to the Indiana border. Some friends that I'd played D&D with got all into ghost hunting and whatnot, and we'd often travel down around the Indiana side, which was around 45 minutes away, I believe. On this particular night, we picked up the girl I was dating. Her and I were sitting in the back seat while my two buddies were in the front seat. We're on a somewhat secluded two-lane road with thick woods on the right side of us, I'm not trying to be vague at this point, I really don't remember much about the area or exactly where we were, and John says something to the effect of don't trust what you see around here, I hear your eyes play tricks on you in this area. Almost on cue, 
we start seeing what basically looks like black fog or shadows darting and swimming across the road in the light of the headlights. We remain calm and keep going, eventually, the road turns off to the right into the woods, and we take the turn. After about a quarter mile, the road either goes straight onto gravel or tees to the left. We take the left. At this point, we're driving slowly, maybe 5 miles an hour, and both the girlfriend and I are looking out the passenger side window, I was on the passenger side, if that matters, and about 15 feet into the woods, maybe 30 from us total. I see what looks like a small, naked old man hunched over eating something bloody and messy, his back is to us. My mind immediately went to folklore, and I think red cap as soon as I see it, even though it wasn't wearing anything. I slowly turn to the girlfriend because it's a bit much to see and not think you're batshit crazy, and her eyes are taking up her whole face, and she's already all teary-eyed, and they start streaming down her face when she looks at me. She's petrified. We both tell my friends in the front that we need to go, there's something in the woods. She's basically crying, and I'm fairly freaking out too. The two in front didn't see it, and they're frantic to know what we saw and want to drive by again, which the two of us want nothing to do with. So a hundred-ish yards later, the road turns to the right onto the gravel, and the driver decides we're going to turn around here and go back the way we came. We get turned around, and as we start off the gravel, the car dies, not a clutch issue, it was an automatic and a pretty unexplainable engine quit. The girlfriend flat out starts screaming, and the driver says to relax, tries to turn the engine over, and thankfully it starts. However, the moment the car turns over, headlights immediately turn on behind us. Mind you, it's pitch black out, there are no street lights, it's a heavily wooded area, and we hadn't seen another car in who knows how long, never mind the fact that our car and headlights were just facing where this car appeared when we were trying to turn around. At this point, everyone fairly well decides, okay, duck this, we're obviously somewhere we shouldn't be, we're out. So we end up driving back by the area where we saw the man, and there's nothing there now, no little naked man, no deer, I believe it was a deer it was eating when I first saw it, and we get to the area that first branched off to the gravel road when we first went into this area. As we approach this road, and the other car is following behind us, we're eager to get the duck out of there, another set of headlights turn on from this gravel road as well. So in the car, there's the four of us all going duck duck, just believing we've stumbled into some weird occult shit we didn't mean to, and all we want is to go back home now. We drive back out to the main two-lane road that took us this way, and both cars go their separate ways uneventfully. It's been over 20 years, and I still get chills thinking about this. The little, naked, gnarly man all bunched over eating the deer is just as vivid as it ever was. A lot of weird stuff happened when I lived in the Bridgman, Michigan, area. This was the most extreme, but I had about 20 years of unexplained experiences crammed into the two years I lived there. To describe the red cap further, from what I remember, it was naked. I believe it would have maybe been three and a half feet tall if it stood upright and was really stocky. It was squatting down low, almost to the ground while it ate, and also somewhat hairy, as in hairy like that one hairy friend we all have on its shoulders and back. There was blood all over its hands and forearms, and it was holding what looked like the leg of a deer. There was a mess of the rest of it at its feet. I had about a three quarters view of it, mostly its back, I didn't get a good view of its face, a little of it, as it kind of glanced over its shoulder at us nonchalantly as we drove by. I just remember it looking old and menacing, like a furious little 70-year-old man. Unnerving, to say the least. <laughs>